say today is Wednesday. It is the 6th of December. Welcome to Vlogmas, day six. Dun, dun, dun. And today is quite a busy day actually, because I'm just about to go off to the hospital to go and get my hearing aids retubed. I'm just gonna, you're very much gonna see why in a second. Oh, that's why. Because the tubes have gone solid and now <laughs> they're detached from from the actual bit that goes in my ear. And then we come home and I'm going to write my article for Liability Magazine, which you can find, I'm gonna put a link to my other articles and then you can follow that. And when this one comes out, it will be there. I'm getting, I'm getting my hair trimmed, just a little trim, not a cut, just a trim, just to blunt off the ends because I think you need really good blunt ends with vintage hair really. And also I've kind of been looking at my outfit for today, which I'm just gonna, I'm just going to show you. So this is what I'm wearing today, which I'm just about to post on Instagram, so you can see. So I'm wearing this top from Rocket Originals, which you may... There we go. There we go. Which you can see. And it's got the most adorable little buttons and crossover detailing here. But it is woolen. And I am allergic to wool, so I'm also wearing it with an H&M little short sleeved polo neck underneath, which is quite good. And I know that some people actually have been asking, how do I wear things for when it's really cold, how to wear layered clothes and whatnot. So I'm also gonna include that in this video, plus a little thing about coats. This is a vintage skirt that I got from the Kilo Fair in Brighton, where you can just buy as much as you like and you pay by the kilo. Yeah, which is great if you want really light stuff and terrible if you want heavy things. And my shoes, which are super adorable, I think you can agree, you can see them there. These are actually from Monsoon Children's Section. And now I'm just going to pop down to the local shops because I really want to get some ingredients. I really, really, really want to make a gluten-free, low FODMAP mince pies this year. I've been retrying. I have this whole recipe and everything. I just need some really specific ingredients that hopefully they have. So I couldn't find everything I need, but I did manage to get uh, some roasting chestnuts, which is awesome. They're really expensive though. <laughs> they are four pounds fifty for the bag, and I know, I know. Last year we just went and collected them, but we haven't really had time to do that this year, and I think the season's almost over. So it seemed like a worthwhile purchase at the time. I really want to make some gluten-free low fodmap mince pies. I think that'd be really amazing and I haven't eaten a mince pie in 10 years so might as well try but it's really difficult to find all the ingredients which is really annoying that's what I was looking for hopefully I can find some soon though well hello so I'm I'm feeling pretty bad <laughs> I feel that kind of you know that kind of really like oh when you get so tired and then you get a bit angry just because you're tired and you just... <laughs> it's what Clara said earlier that it's it's basically it's basically toddler toddler angry which is very true, that's me but to combat this I'm going to film and I'm going to talk about fashion because fashion just makes me happy and it also makes me feel quite productive um, to talk about sort of fashion related things, especially when it comes to chronic illness or disability, because then I at least 
feels like I'm doing something for the world, I'm like giving something back. Anyway, if these tips are helpful to one person, I've done my job for the day and I can be very happy. I just have to film this quickly because I'm getting my hair done in an hour. But I don't have to go anywhere, so that's good. Always get your hair done at home. Don't leave the house. <laughs> oh, why did I leave the house today? I feel so silly. And now my head really hurts and I can't wear my hearing aids because my head hurts. Mm, even though I got my hearing aids redone. It's fine though. It's fine. Because I'm just talking to you and I don't need hearing aids for that. We're good. And anyway, Tilly will come and help me when there's someone at the door. Hopefully, I can edit this much later and it will be brilliant. All right, fortunately, we already filmed all the kind of the cutaway little bits. Already done that, so I can just slot them in. It's going to look marvellous. It won't be as discombobulated as my mind feels. I get asked a lot about wearing lovely vintage clothes in cold climates and layering. But obviously in my outfits of the day, they're not the warmest, but that is because I tend to live inside my house and not go places. My house is quite warm, it's very nice. <laughs> but I do go places and believe me, I know all about being cold. If you've been following me for a while and paying attention, you will already know this. But when I was in my early 20s, about six years ago now actually, I, I, got, I was very ill. Um, my body started rejecting food, which wasn't great. And I, it, didn't, it didn't matter how much food I put into my body, I, the calories were going nowhere. They just, mo my food just moved through me while I was sick, but I couldn't digest properly, um, which is something that is actually quite common with my connective tissue disorder. And, which is also relates to why now I eat quite a restricted diet and there are many things that I cannot eat. I do have some videos all about that. If you'd like to watch them, I um, in the description and I'll probably put them card above, the playlist and everything. But yes, six years ago everything stopped, stopped working completely and I just, pff, the weight dropped off me essentially. I think at my lowest point I was, uh, I was six stone, sorry I, was trying, I know how much, <laughs> I was trying to work that in pounds. I was six stone which I think is 88 pounds if that's how you count. This is how much it is in kilograms. And I'm 5'9". That's how much this is in centimetres. Not good, not a good weight. I think my BMI was 13 at its lowest point. Probably the worst thing about being thin, there are many bad things, but the worst thing is the cold. The constant, constant freezing cold. I felt in the height of summer that I was about to die from the chill. It just, the air hurt my skin. It was so cold. While everyone else is walking around in t-shirts, I'd be there in my three or four layers, potentially a massive coat as well, uh, just feeling like I was absolutely about to freeze to death. I think it was probably the thing I've said the most. It's so cold, it's so cold. My mother's always like, shut up. It is not cold, you are cold. That is not the same thing. My mother's like that. She can be quite tough, love. I think at one point we went to, we went to America for the summer, a little family trip, and we were on the beach and people were there in their bikinis, just boiling away. And I was so cold, I wanted to bury myself in the sand. Happily, a lot of my stomach problems have sorted themselves out or have been sorted out through the changes in my diet. Yay! And I'm now a much healthier weight, but still there are some problems when it comes to cold. Sorry, there's a girl staring at me. But I still have some problems when it comes to the cold. My circulation is horrific and my hands and feet are always cold, always cold, which I like to point out cold hands, warm heart, and I can't control my body temperature. It tends to go from 
boiling to absolutely freezing. People around me are like, nothing has changed, Jessica. What is wrong with you? The whole point of that little story there, musical interlude, musical interlude, story interlude, is that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to layering up and coats and being freezing cold, but still wanting to look nice. So let's begin with coats. This is my pearl coat from Collective Clothing. Oh, it's beautiful. It's my favorite thing. I wear it everywhere. Good points, so warm. Bad points, so warm. Good points, people comment in the street. Bad point, people comment in the street. It's absolutely fabulous, but my God, does it always look like I'm off to the opera. Next up, this is very new to my roster, the Elements Rainwear. Absolutely gorgeous Mac. Ugh, oh, good point. An actually stylish Mac. Have you ever seen an actually stylish Mac before? No. Also has space for a big skirt. Vital, vital when you dress the way I do. It's waterproof. It's easy to transport because you can fold it up into quite a small space. It's also very easy to clean. Just wipe down, wipe down with a little bit of a bit of water, unlike the rather massive fur coats, which I do, of course, have to get dry cleaned. Ugh. Bad points, it's not that warm. Since it is translucent, you really do have to think about what you're wearing underneath. You can't just throw this on, run off to the shops in your gym jams. Everyone knows you're wearing them, okay? Everyone will know. Still, this is such a fabulous, fabulous find. I love it. I shall wear it for many years to come. I stole this coat from my mother when she moved house. She might not know I have it. Hi, mom. I have it. Good points. It is so incredibly massive. You can put loads of things on underneath. Bad points. So incredibly massive. It is also pretty stylish. And it is so massive. You can wear a number of thick jumpers on underneath. So it's definitely warm. I could probably also fit Claudia in here. Come see, come see. My red coat! This is currently being cleaned, so here are some Instagram pictures. I actually inherited this from my late mother-in-law. I have a lot of her clothes, actually. She's a very stylish lady. I love, love, love this red. It's a brilliant pop of colour. Even if your outfit's not feeling too fancy, you can put this on over the top and feel quite good about yourself. The lapels are beautiful. I love a big rappel, much like in the pearl coat. And there's just something about it that makes it look so glamorous. Oh, and my final coat is this cream mac, which I bought for a holiday in the Lake District. Oh, I love the Lake District. Which, uh, you can see that actually, in the card above. Oh, God, that was so fun. It's the perfect coat for a wheelchair as well, because it unzips from the bottom. Hint. If you need a coat for your wheelchair, always make sure it has the double zip so it can unzip from the bottom, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of pouching fabric down there. Not good. Inside there's a little collar pocket which you can open up, throw that hood over your head and you're good to go. Apologies if things look slightly different now. I had to change the battery, but then I ran off to vomit instead because my life is fun like that. Okay, layering, layering clothes, let's talk. Number one, the most important part of layering. The thing that really keeps me warm is my long line bra. It's from Rego, it is slightly too big for me. It's kind of gross because I've worn it and washed it so many times. <laughs> it probably doesn't do that much in holding me in anymore. But it's a truly fabulous thing. Shapewear, this is one of the best pieces of advice that I can possibly give you. I know I probably say that quite a lot in different videos. Anyway, it's a really good piece of advice. Shapewear in a size slightly too large for you is going to cling to your body, but not in the sense that it will hurt. And it will cover you, it will trap the warmth in, and it will keep you delightfully toasty, whilst also maintaining quite a nice shape, rather than just like putting on a massive fluffy jumper, and you are now just a ball of fluffy jumper. Other tips, white tights, super vintage, super gorgeous. Now I know some people say white tights, they make you look like a child. By some people, I mean my mother and my wife, but I don't think so. I think white tights are actually incredibly stylish. They show the dirt, but you'd be surprised how dirty they actually don't get. Although I guess that depends on your lifestyle. 
don't, you know, do a tough mudder in your work tights, that's silly. But in your day-to-day -day life, you'll be all right, I promise. It makes everything else that you're wearing look cleaner somehow. Look cleaner and more stylish and just sharper, it adds that extra little touch. Plus, it makes your shoes pop. Black tights are great, but only if you're wearing a black outfit. Generally an outfit that's all black, that's the only time I would wear black tights. I just don't like them. I just don't like black though, to be honest. I have this argument with Clara. Clara really loves black. It's all she wears. Black isn't even a colour, okay? It's the absence of colour. Next tip, when you are layering up, tights and a long sleeved shirt or jumper under a dress can look very, very stylish, provided that the tights and the sleeves you've just added are the same colour. It adds an extra frisson. It makes everything look intentional. You can layer up as much as you like. As long as it looks intentional, you're going to look stylish, fashionable. That's what fashion's all about, really. You can wear something incredibly stupid, but as long as it looks intentional. If you've just randomly grabbed something and thrown it on, it doesn't go with the rest of your outfit, it's, it's not. It's not going to look intentional. That, that does not. I don't know. Next up, belts those massive jumpers. As we said previously, nobody really wants to look like a sack of potatoes. No, there's nothing wrong with wearing an absolutely fabulous massive jumper, but belt it. Again, this is all about intention. This is showing, oh, not that I had this super stylish outfit, but actually I'm really cold, so I just shoved this jumper over the top, but I didn't, didn't put my much thought into it, oh well. Instead, no, this is, my outfit is based around this jumper. This amazing jumper that I have made look incredibly stylish by putting a rather nice belt on over it. Mm -hmm. For those of you with very cold feet, like mine, or Claudia's, which go yellow, because she has rain on. <laughs> A really good way to get around wearing extra socks is to wear your socks under your tights. Again, we are talking about the opaque tights here. Mine are always white. Claudia prefers black. I mean, ugh. put your tights on underneath. I'm thinking thin little pop socks here, basically. No one needs to know. Now you can wear shoes that maybe you would think of as not particularly wintry, but still delightful. On the subject of thin hidden thermals, Many good department stores, and I'm thinking largely of N and M and S and John Lewis. Mm, I'm not sure about Debenhams, though I have found some there before. Largely M and S and John Lewis, you know the faves. They will do very thin thermals. These are an absolute joy and a complete must-have. You can generally match the length of the thermal to the clothes that you're wearing. Meaning that like right now, for instance, you can't even tell that I'm wearing a thermal. No, because it's exactly the same length as the top. My personal preference when it comes to thermals will always be bamboo because it can be incredibly thin and incredibly warm and my lord, it's so soft. Oh, but the price, the price. 100% cotton thermals will do the job just fine. Vintage cardigans, they can be very, very stylish, they're very warm, but they are generally quite bulky. And then even if you're putting them under a skirt, you've got the kind of the bulk under the skirt. So you'd have to have a skirt with a waistband that was larger than you'd normally wear. And then you would of course have to make sure that your petticoat went over rather than under, so you're not getting that lumpy bit. Oh, mm, uh. I tend to just wear my vintage cardigans open, to be honest. Unless I'm having a bad day in which, screw that, all of the clothes, all of the time. And finally, to sum up layers. I am a massive fan of the five layers. Yes, wearing five very thin layers, one on top of each other, I find personally so much warmer than just one massive woolen jumper. You can wear, for instance, a three-quarter little cropped cardigan, delightful, which underneath will have a dress, which underneath that will have a shirt, which underneath that will have some thermals, which underneath that could potentially have a long line bra. That is how I dress when I am very, very cold. And it works. It looks good. And no one can really tell that you're wearing that many layers. 
hope you found this video very helpful um, and that my tips managed to make it through this muddled brain into actually a semblance of something that makes sense. Let me know if this has been useful for you or if there's anything else that you would like to know that I touched on and didn't explain well enough. My apologies, we'll try harder. I'm gonna pass out. Oh my god. Voila, my hair is done. Nice. I mainly just needed the ends chopped because they were getting quite quite raggedy. <laughs> I have what's a really long, it's really long, but it's like a long midi cut. So it's shorter in the front and it goes to a U shape at the back. It's kind of weird seeing me, seeing myself with straight hair. I'm gonna curl it, you can see what it looks like in the morning. Hopefully it should be a bit easier to curl now. Which is good because I have some hair tutorials that I want to film. Sort of Christmassy hair tutorials. And also <laughs> my video that did really well, the Why I Don't Sound Deaf. Lots of people have asked for the hair tutorial for that, so I'm actually going to do it. If I haven't said already, which I might not have said because it's it's been a tired day. This is the Tango Red, the Besame Tango Red. I am actually, I am actually going to go to bed and curl my hair and watch Netflix and then we're going to eat dinner in bed with my beautiful wife who I am going to make edit this video. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you for spending the day with me. Oh.